Hey, I'm Shane Smith, the owner of Genesis Off-Road, and this is our installation video for our dual battery system for the Toyota FJ Cruiser. In this video, I'll give you a quick recap on how our system works and why you need it, and then I'll talk about the battery options to go along with it, and then I'll show you exactly how to install it step by step. Now this one is very similar to our 4Runner kit if you're familiar with that one, but the FJ is a little bit smaller, so it is very tight in there. So I'll give you several tips along the way to make sure you get it installed right the first time. If you can use a wrench, you can install this kit in your driveway in a couple of hours. Okay, let's take a quick look at what's included and how it works. So first of all, the kit is gonna come with a new steel battery tray that's gonna hold the two batteries. You'll get all the installation hardware that you're gonna need to get it installed. And then this top plate that holds the batteries down comes completely pre-wired out of the box. So you're gonna get this piece exactly the way you see it here. This comes with a smart isolator. This is the brains of the operation. This is monitoring the voltage of the batteries to decide when to connect and disconnect them. So when this sees your cranking battery is above 13.2 volts for two minutes, it's gonna close the contacts inside the silver solenoid and that links the batteries together through the solenoid so they can both be charged by your alternator at the same time. Now your negative posts of the batteries are connected together all the time by this long black wire here. So while you're driving down the road, engine charges up the cranking battery first. Once it's above 13.2, it links the batteries together. They're both charging while you're driving down the road. You stop at your campsite, maybe you get your lights on, maybe you're listening to the radio, maybe you're talking on the CB, you got the fridge in the back. All this stuff will continue to run off of both batteries at the same time to give you a little extra run time, but only until they drop down to about 12.7 volts for one minute. Now that's still pretty high because we want to protect that cranking battery. So once they hit about 12.7 for a minute, it's gonna open the contacts in the solenoid that separates the batteries from each other all the accessories that you have wired up to your power and ground bus bars, these devices will continue to run from your auxiliary battery so that those devices don't drain down your cranking battery. But you wanna keep in mind, your factory fuse box is hardwired straight to your cranking battery. So that means all of your factory circuits, anything that runs through your factory fuse box, all of those devices, uh, your headlights, your head unit on your radio, any built-in factory 12 volt outlets, all those kind of things will continue to drain from your cranking battery. Uh, you also have uh, power and ground bus bars. Now these just give you a convenient spot to hook up your electrical accessories, just so that you're not stacking up all of your wires uh, on, a, on your battery post clamp. We wanna try to keep your wiring nice and tidy. So all the accessories that you have on the bus bars, those can drain that accessory battery down all the way down until it's completely dead, right? You don't care how low that battery gets. You just wanna be able to start up the engine the next morning. So this system will protect your cranking battery from getting drained down by your aftermarket accessories. Now you also have a boost button here. So if your cranking battery were to get drained down for some reason and you can't start the engine, you can hit this button one time and that will send the signal to connect the batteries manually. And that lets you use the power from your auxiliary battery to help start the engine. So that's the boost feature. So this comes all completely pre-wired for you. No wiring for you to do it all. No modifications to your factory wires. This is gonna sit right down on top of the batteries and hold them in place. All these wires are gonna line right up with the posts. And you bolt the, tray, bolt the lid down with four bolts here and you're pretty much done. Okay, now let's talk about batteries for a second. So this kit for the FJ is gonna need a couple of group 25 size batteries. And the group 25 just refers to the industry standard size, the physical dimensions of the batteries. So what we have here is the Full River brand. This is their uh, full throttle series of batteries in the group 25 size. Now this is a great battery. This is a, a dual purpose. So it means it's great for both cranking and for deep cycle applications, meaning you can drain that battery down low recharge it back up without hurting it. Uh, now you don't want to do that with a traditional lead acid battery because draining a lead acid battery down and then recharging it repeatedly will reduce its lifespan. But the, the full throttle and also on our website, the Odyssey brand, we also carry the Odyssey Performance Series in the Group 25 on our website. Uh, both of those are excellent, high quality, very good rated, uh, lots of capacity. Um, both of them are, are really good AGM, dual purpose, cranking and deep cycle batteries. So you can't go wrong with either one. Now the full throttle brand of batteries does have a little bit more capacity 
than the Odyssey does. Uh, so that, that's one thing to think about. If you need the most power that you can possibly fit under the hood, then full throttle is going to be the way to go. Okay, enough talk. Let's pop the hood and we'll get started. Okay, let's get started by pulling this stock battery out of here using a 10 millimeter wrench. And then we'll remove this factory hold down bracket using a 10 millimeter on our cordless drill. And we'll pull this battery out. And then we'll pull out this little plastic battery tray that's down here. We won't need this. Okay, so at first glance, it looks like there's lots of room for activities when you pull that stock battery out of there. But once we start putting two batteries in here, we're gonna fill that space up very quickly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this fuse box, the factory fuse box, backwards towards the firewall just by about an inch or so. And to do that, we're gonna pull a couple of these bolts here. Uh, one, two, and three that secure this fuse box in place. And then your hardware bag has some little relocation brackets that's gonna let you move that fuse box back and mount it back in place. And we're gonna use one of these factory threaded holes right back here by the, by the little smiley face. Uh, if yours has a little smiley face back there, let me know. Uh, but we're gonna use this threaded, stock threaded hole right here to mount our fuse box relocation bracket to, to remount that point. And then here on the fender, this bolt is gonna move over. And then this box right here is actually the fuse and relay for the 400 watt power inverter in the back of the vehicle. Uh, this one's for the, the uh, daytime running lamps. But we're gonna move this little bracket over as well. So that one's, that one's pretty easy. And then down here, I'll show you a few other things. Uh, when we put the two batteries in here, you should have about a finger's width of room uh, before you get into the oil fill neck so that will still be accessible. Up here on the corner you're gonna, probably going to come all the way up to this little this little uh, mounting tab here by the by the radiator and I'll show you that when we get a little bit closer. Uh, the headlights on the FJ should be no problem. Uh, they're, they're very low profile so no issues there. And in this corner uh, the batteries will come all the way into uh, this bend of the corner here. Um, so let's get started by starting to, to move some of this stuff back a little bit. Okay, we'll start by moving this one with this little 12 millimeter bolt here. And we're just gonna move this bracket down to the next threaded hole and put it back on there. Now we're gonna pull the three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fuse box in place. Okay, now if you try to move this fuse box back, you may notice this factory wire harness here is kind of holding it from moving very much. So we're gonna come through with a little pry tool and remove all of the little uh, wire retaining clips. We're also gonna remove the bolt that holds this little bracket here that holds the, uh, the factory positive wire harness in place. So by removing this little bracket, that's gonna give us a little bit more flexibility on this positive harness. Now, once you get the batteries in here, you're probably not gonna be able to reattach this little bracket. So you can remove this if you want or just leave it here. It's not gonna bother anything. So I'm gonna take the original bolt and just put it back in its original location. And then we're also gonna uh, loosen up this bolt that holds the factory negative uh, wire. This is the body ground connection. And this is gonna get rotated out of the way. So for now, we're just gonna rotate this up uh, and over out of the way. And we will come back and uh, adjust this wire at the end. And one more, there's also a small uh, wire down here that goes into the fuse box. Uh, this one has several little clips along the inner fender liner that, uh, that hold that in place. So we're going to pop those loose so we get a little bit more slack on this wire. Now you should be able to tell that you've got a lot more flexibility with moving this fuse box around. So we're going to grab our relocation brackets and get started on those. We'll take the first one of these little stainless relocation brackets and put it on the back side of the fuse box using one of the factory 10 millimeter bolts. And then use one of the provided 10 millimeter bolts to hold the fuse box down to the little bracket. So the second one is gonna go over here on the fender 
And up front here, this one is not gonna have one of these little brackets because of the clearance to the bottom of the battery tray. So there's, there won't be a bolt in this one. We're gonna put the uh, factory bolt through the hole and into the stock threaded hole. And we'll rotate this bracket this way and put the new 10 millimeter bolt through the fuse box and into the bracket. Okay, let me show you what that looks like. Here you can see the relocation bracket at the back. And when we get ready to put these batteries in here, uh, we're gonna need to push and shove this fuse box around a little bit. So I'm gonna leave these just finger tight for the moment. Over here you can see the new mounting location for this one. And here's the little tab for this one. So just leave those loose for right now. Okay, now we're gonna deal with this little tab sticking up right here. This is actually used for the factory battery hold down bracket to secure that in place. On our other Toyota kits, we usually bend this bracket backwards, but on this one, we actually don't have enough room since that inner fender sheet metal is slanted. Uh, that won't go down far enough to clear the battery tray. So we're actually gonna bend this forward as far as we can. And that bracket along with the leg on the fuse box, that's actually why we have to raise the bottom of the batteries up a little bit. That's why we have those legs on the bottom of the battery tray is to clear some of this stuff that's in the way. So we'll go ahead and bend that now. Okay, now with that little tab laying flat, we're ready to test fit our battery tray. The tray is just gonna drop right down in here. So you should be able to put your hand under here and feel that little uh, hold down bracket that you bent. Make sure that's out of the way. Make sure both of these long legs here are laying flat against the sheet metal. Okay, with our tray in here, you can see right away that we're really close to this hose that's on the front side of the radiator. Uh, we're gonna be really close to the oil fill neck. We're gonna move this positive harness here out of our way, move this ground connection wire out of our way as much as possible. And then we can start setting the uh, then we can set the auxiliary battery in here and slide it towards the fender. Okay, from this angle you can see my tray, uh, my battery is bumping against the little radiator uh, support, front support here. So I'm going to slide the tray over a little bit and move my battery towards the fender and just adjust this until you get it all the way over. Okay, now with the accessory battery all the way up against the corner here, I can tell that when I drop my cranking battery in here, it's probably gonna uh, bump against the engine cover. So I'm just gonna pop this off for right now. And set that out of the way. And now we can drop our cranking battery in. Okay, with the two batteries in here, we just wanna check all of our clearances. You can tell uh, that the battery tray is slightly off center uh, slightly off from perpendicular with the with the fender here and that's okay uh, i'm going to wiggle it around just a little bit i'm going to move my fuse box back a little and see if i can straighten this up just a little bit there we go that's a little bit better okay now at this point in the job Let's stop and talk about what we've got here. So if you're this far along and you're struggling to get your battery tray into position and get the batteries exactly the way you want them, I'll give you a couple of easy tips here. Number one, of course, we wanna have clearance by the oil fill necks. We're not bumping into that. If you need a little bit extra clearance, you can take a razor blade or a Dremel or cutoff tool and just shave this little rounded tab here by the, uh, by the radiator. Uh, that's just some extra plastic. You can shave that back a little bit to give you some clearance there. Also, right up in here in the corner of the, uh, this little uh, fender and radiator core support piece, if you need to take a Dremel to that little corner sheet metal there and just notch that out just a little bit, you can do that, uh, no problem there, or take a little hammer and get yourself a little clearance. So again, you know, we're trying to shove two batteries into a one battery hole. So if you need to make some adjustments, just take a look at your situation. There may be some manufacturing variations from the factory. Uh, yours may fit slightly different than this. Just stop and take a look. Make sure you got clearance for everything. Make sure you nothing's rubbing. Also, down here, uh, down low, there is a, uh, there's also a uh, water hose coming out of the radiator. So make sure that that is not rubbing or 
chafing against the side of the battery tray. Uh, if it is, you're going to want to keep on adjusting until you get that uh, in the right position. Definitely don't want to rub a hole through your radiator hose. One more tip for you. The base of the battery tray is actually slightly longer than the length of the two batteries. So the tray will actually slide back and forth. So if you're getting close to that uh, water hose over here, you can tr slide the tray towards the fender without the batteries moving. So uh, you got a little bit of a built-in adjustability there. Okay, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about the location of my batteries and all my clearance. And uh, I'm just about ready to bolt this tray down. Uh, I wanna double check my oil fill neck. I can, I can take this cap off and I can replace it. I've still got access there. Uh, so I've got plenty, plenty of clearance there. Um, so I'm ready to take these batteries back out and mark the tray to drill the holes for the nut certs. Uh, but before we start pulling these batteries out, we wanna make sure that this tray does not move when we do that. Uh, the tricky part about all the Toyota vehicles is there's really no good factory mounting points to tie into like, the, like we have on the Jeeps. So we wanna make sure that this tray doesn't move. So I'm gonna make a couple of uh, little alignment marks here to help me make sure that my tray doesn't move when I pull my batteries out. Okay, now while you're holding down your second battery, go ahead and lift your cranking battery up out of the way. Now while you hold your tray, slide your accessory battery over a little bit so that you clear the corner and lift it up out of the way. Okay, now in order to drill the holes to put our nut certs in there, I wanna mark all four of these holes with a Sharpie. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark these. And then we'll pull our tray out. Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, now we can see where we marked our holes with a Sharpie. Here, over here, three and four. So you can see we're not uh, right on, we don't wanna be right on the edge where that sheet metal turns down so that the uh, nut cert can get a good bite on the flat sheet metal. Uh, this one should be fine. This one is definitely fine. This one is a, a little bit close to that factory hole there. So if yours is a little bit close, a little bit too close for comfort, you might want to just put your tray back in there, put the batteries back in. See if you can adjust the tray back that way just a little bit to stay away from this factory hole, but I think this one should be fine. Okay, now I'm gonna use a center punch to mark my holes to be drilled out. Then I'm gonna use a, a small pilot uh, bit to get the hole started. And then I'm gonna use a 25 64 inch drill bit to drill the holes for the nut certs. Now, if you don't have a 25 64 inch drill bit, uh, now's a great time to take a break, uh, run to the hardware store, make sure you get the right size uh, drill bit because the little head, uh, the little flange on these nut certs is not very big. So if you go oversized on your drill bit, then there's not gonna be much for that nut cert to bite onto. Uh, so make sure you got a 25 64. Now we use a little paint touch up pen to touch up the edges of that bare metal. Okay, now we're ready to drop in our nut certs. Now we're ready to install the nut certs, but let's just take a minute to talk about these for a minute, just in case you're not familiar with these steel nut certs. Because uh, it, it is very important that we get these installed properly. So let's just say that, uh, let's just imagine for a second that this washer here represents that sheet metal uh, shelf that we're going to install the battery tray onto. So I went ahead and I drilled this uh, washer out to 2564th. 
So we're going to take our steel nut insert here and we drop that in there. Now we're going to use the little nut insert install tool that came in your hardware baggie. And when we tighten that bolt down, it's going to compress this nut insert. It's going to compress down and it's going to bite against the back side of the, of the sheet metal and the top side. So I'm going to install one of these here in the vise to show you what that looks like. And then I'll show you how to do it in the truck. Okay, we're going to take our washer and put that, clamp that into our vise. And this will represent the sheet metal and the truck. Now we're going to take our nut cert and drop it through the hole that we just drilled. And then in your hardware bag, you're going to take the grade eight bolt and the heavy duty washer and then uh, the flange nut, put that on like this. And then we're going to take all of those and start threading it into the nut cert from the top like this. Now we're going to take a half inch wrench and hold this nut still. And our washer will be on top of our wrench like this. And then we'll take a 7 16 ratchet and start to tighten this bolt down. And as we tighten that bolt down, you'll see that the nut insert starts to compress. If you watch real closely, you can see it compressing. When it gets tight enough, you'll be able to tell that it'll bottom out and you won't be able to go any further. But we want this real tight so that it bites into the backside. Okay, now our wrench is wedged on there, so we're gonna just back this bolt off like this, loosen it up. Now when we take the little hardware kit apart, we're gonna take this bolt out, and you'll use this on the next one. Now you can see how the nut cert has been compressed up against the back side of the sheet metal. And we'll get those nut certs cinched down with our little nut cert install hardware here and a 7 16 and a half inch wrench. Okay, the hard part's over. Let's take a look at what we got. So let's zoom in, in on here on these nut certs and we'll see what those are supposed to look like when they're installed. So you should see the threads inside there should be very close to the top of the surface. And also you should be able to reach down in there. Um, you can reach in with your hand and feel most of these. You wanna be able to feel that it's biting against the back side of that sheet metal. And, and fully collapsed against the back side of that sheet metal. Because if it's not, you will, you will feel it. It'll be pretty obvious that, uh, that it's not completely uh, compressed down all the way. So make sure you get those in there right. So now the rest of this is gonna go real easy. So let's drop our tray back in and get it bolted down. Okay, we'll use our stainless bolt-in washer and bolt that tray down. Okay, I'm gonna turn the torque down on my uh, cordless drill here and run those, just to run those down with a 7 16 And then I'm gonna come back and hand tighten those. A 
Okay, that tray is in there nice and secure. We're ready to drop our batteries in. Okay, my batteries are in. My clearance looks good all the way around. Before I start hooking up the, uh, the top lid here, I'm gonna go ahead and secure this fuse box down. Uh, remember, we left those little relocation brackets loose. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and install the, the top lid to hold the batteries down. But uh, before you set this big piece of metal down on top of two batteries, make sure you've got these little, these little caps in place so we don't accidentally short anything out. So we're gonna set this down right here and we'll go ahead and secure that down. And we'll tighten these lid bolts with a half inch. Okay, now we'll start making our battery cable connections. We'll start with the positive over here. And we'll tighten that up with a half inch wrench. Now we'll work on our cranking battery positive. We'll tighten the clamp with a 10 millimeter. And then we're gonna remove this factory nut right here with a 12 millimeter. Now, if you wanna reuse this little factory uh, battery post cover right here, what we can do is take this factory positive wire off and we can flip it over so that it will lay flat and just kind of massage that in place, put it back on there. Now our new wire will stack on top of it. We can have both of those coming out the side of the post like this, then our cover will go back on real easily. I'll pull the cover up and work that in place. There we go. Now we'll work on the factory ground clamp over here. We're gonna to try to tuck this wire down under, under here uh, beside the fuse box. And you may wanna loosen this bolt up again to give you a little uh, slack so you can massage these wires into the right position. Now this one is a little bit awkward because it has this long uh, metal uh, clamp piece coming out the back of the, the post clamp here. So you may have to just uh, experiment with this and get this in the, in the best orientation you can. I'm gonna move our wires out of the way for just a second. There we go, that seems to work pretty good. So on, on mine, the, uh, the post clamp is kind of going at an angle back this way. Uh, and that'll work out just fine. If, uh, if you want that to kind of come out a little bit straighter, you could uh, just bend this uh, heavy metal bracket piece right here uh, so that it kind of goes down between the battery and the fuse box a little bit easier. Then we're gonna remove this nut with a 12 millimeter. We'll put our short wire that goes to the uh, ground bus bar on first. And then we'll stack the, the longer wire on top of that so they sit flat and put the nut back on. Okay, and then last is the cranking battery negative post lamp. We'll tighten that down with a half inch. It for the wiring, we're all done with that part. Uh, now we're just gonna tidy up. We're gonna put our engine cover back on. And you're probably going to notice that the corner of the engine cover is bumping against your uh, uh, positive post clamp over here. Uh, so if your lid won't snap down, uh, mine will kind of, this one will kind of bend around it. And I think that looks fine. That works fine for me. Uh, if you want a little bit of extra clearance here, you can take a razor blade and just cut the, uh, the corner of that engine cover off if you want to. I'm going to double check all my post clamps are real good and tight. Uh, you should not be able to wiggle any of these post clamps uh, even a little bit. If, if any of these can move at all, it, it can cause you some electrical gremlins. So uh, I think we're all good. Everything is secure. The fuse box is back in place. I double checked my clearances. Everything looks good. I think we're ready to start the engine.
Okay, we're pretty much done. But before you go, let me give you a few more tips that's gonna help you use this system and get the most out of it. Uh, first things first, it makes a lot more sense to how the system works once it's in here and you can see everything in place. So this one, this battery here is gonna be your cranking battery. And that's because it has your factory positive post clamp on it. And that factory positive wire feeds your alternator, your starter and your fuse box. So that's why this one is the cranking battery. And the one over by the fender is your accessory battery. That's because that one feeds power, the power and ground bus bars. So uh, when you're hooking up your accessories, uh, your winch, uh, air compressor, anything else that has a, a high power draw, high amperage power draw, you can put those heavy duty cables onto the tall center studs on the bus bars here. And then any of your smaller, uh, lighter amperage accessories like LED lights or a CB or something like that, you've got uh, several smaller screws in a circle here. You can uh, attach those smaller gauge wires to those, uh, those connection points. And if you need some uh, nice uh, ring terminals, you can, you can find that on our website. We sell the nice uh, high quality crimp on uh, heat shrinkable uh, ring terminals that will fit on the bus bars. And uh, uh, when you're running your wires, another great tip is try to run all of your wires coming from the same direction. So a lot of people will put uh, you know, auxiliary fuse boxes like an S-Pod or something like that uh, up in this area. Uh, and then if you run all of your connection wires uh, one direction to the bus bars, the reason you want to do that is it makes it a lot easier to service your batteries later. So if you need to swap batteries at some point in the future, you pull these four bolts holding the lid down and with all the wires coming in from one direction, the lid will lift up and just swing out of the way and set down. Now, if you've got wires coming in from this way and wires coming in from this way and other ones coming across the top of the lid, then when you try to move that lid out of the way, you're gonna have wires just holding it and it's gonna be difficult to move. Um, also, uh, if, like we said earlier, if your cranking battery is too low for some reason and you can't start the engine, that's when you're gonna hit this boost button You'll hear that solenoid click, and that uh, it, now that's using the power from the auxiliary battery to help start your engine. Now, if you do not start the engine, after about one minute, you'll hear the solenoid click again to separate the batteries again. Uh, so it'll do that automatically for you. Um, so I think that's it. Um, if you have other questions, we have lots of other helpful tech tips on our YouTube channel. Uh, so go pull up our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe on there because we are, we're constantly adding uh, new helpful information out there to help you guys use your vehicles, uh, use these dual battery kits to the, to the maximum. And, uh, but uh, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. That really does help us out. If you have questions, you can email us, info at genesisoffroad.com or give us a call, 901-214-JEEP5337. Uh, but uh, I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, uh, if I missed anything, leave me a comment down below. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.